So we've already gone ahead and have drawn the clock. We have the eight millimeter long minute hand here, and then we have the four millimeter long hour hand, and then we have this sort of distance between the tips, and we've labeled that distance L. And what we can see is that we have formed a triangle, and we have an angle theta between the minute hand and the hour hand. Now, our goal is to answer how fast is the distance between the tips of the hands changing at one o'clock. So when you hear this phrase, how fast, you have to start thinking of rates of change. And so when we say how fast is the distance between the tips changing, what that question is really asking us is, what is the value of dl dt? That is the rate of change in the distance between the tips of the hands per unit time. And so we have to come up with an equation that's going to help us solve for this dl dt. Now if we look at this picture, we have this triangle as noted, and we can actually use the law of cosines as an equation to represent this triangle. Hopefully we remember our law of cosines from a pre-calculus course. And if we were to write this out in the law of cosines, we would say that l squared is equal to 8 squared plus 4 squared minus 2 times 8 times 4 times the cosine of the angle between those two segments, between the 8 and the 4, so the cosine of theta. Now, once we have our equation established, what we need to do is differentiate the equation with respect to time. So we're going to take the derivative of each term with respect to time. For example, you start out with L squared, and you're going to use a little bit of a power rule. So you're going to drag that power in front, so to speak, and you're going to have 2 times L, and then L will be to the power of 1, because remember you subtract 1 in this power rule. But then the chain rule kicks in here and says, well, make sure that you multiply by the derivative of your variable with respect to time. So we have to multiply by dl dt. And suddenly that dl dt appears. That's what we're trying to solve for, remember. On the other side, we have 8 squared, and that's a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. Then 4 squared is also a constant, so that derivative is 0. Now over here, we have a constant multiple rule kicking in here. So we have to take all of these, multiply them together. That gives us 64. But we're going to keep that because that's being multiplied by the cosine of theta. We really just need to do the derivative of the cosine of theta. Of course, the derivative of cos theta is negative sine of theta. But then chain rule kicks in and says, again, don't forget to multiply by the derivative of your variable theta with respect to time. So this is our equation. Let's simplify it a little bit. On the left side, we can keep this 2L dL dt. These zeros here are inconsequential. We're multiplying a negative 64 by a negative sign. So this is going to give us positive 64 sine of theta multiplied by d theta dt. OK, this is great. Now, we are trying to solve for this dL dt. We could easily, perhaps, find the value of L using some basic triangle knowledge. That's not going to be difficult. And then what becomes a little bit more challenging is figuring out the angle, but in particular this, this d theta dt. That's going to present us with the greatest challenge in this question. So let's take a look at that next. Now, as this clock ticks, we know that the hour hand is moving in a clockwise direction, the minute hand is doing the same. We probably understand that the hour hand is going to move slower than the minute hand in a clock. And so what's happening is that angle is shrinking. And so we want to come up with an expression to represent that shrinking angle, that d theta dt. And to do that, we're going to take how fast the hour hand is changing, which we will call dh dt, and then we're going to subtract how fast the minute hand is changing, which we will call dm dt. Now let's talk about dh dt. Think about an hour hand of a clock. You probably know that an hour hand is going to take 12 hours to complete one complete revolution. And a revolution would be 2 pi radians. So the hour hand is going to traverse 2 pi radians in 12 hours, whereas the minute hand is moving faster. So it's going to be able to traverse 2 pi radians in a span of only one hour. And so it takes less time for the minute hand to go around the clock. Now we want to simplify these a little bit. In the first case, we have pi over 6 if we divide top and bottom by 2. And then on the other side here, we're going to want to find a common denominator. So let's multiply the top and bottom by 6. This gives us 12 pi over 6, and that too is in radians per hour. And when we subtract these, we will see that this d theta dt expression is going to equal, let's see, you have 1 pi minus 12 pi, so that's a negative 11 pi over 6, and that's radians per hour. 
So that's fantastic. We now have d theta dt, and we're going to go back and we're going to insert that into our equation that we established earlier. Okay, great. We've put that in for the d theta dt right here, that negative 11 pi over 6. Now we want to go back and figure out a couple more bits of information. Next, let's look at theta, what the angle is at 1 o'clock. Remember, this question is asking us about a time of 1 o'clock. So we've sketched a little clock right here, and we're going to figure out the angle at 1 o'clock between the minute hand and the hour hand. So there's your angle right there. That's theta. Now we can look at that picture, we can see that that angle encompasses one twelfth of a circle. So one twelfth of a circle is one twelfth of two pi radians. Remember, a complete circle traverses two pi radians. We get two pi over twelve, which is pi over six radians. That's going to be theta. That is the angle at one o'clock between the minute and hour hand. So we're going to plug that in for theta right now. Now the only thing that remains to be determined is this value L. So this is going to be the distance between the tip of the minute hand and the tip of the hour hand at exactly 1 o'clock. Now we can do that because remember we have the law of cosines from earlier. There it is right there and before we, written it, we had written it as cosine of theta but now we know theta. At 1 o'clock theta again is pi over 6. So this is going to allow us to solve for that distance L. Now we know 8 squared plus 4 squared is 64 plus 16, so we get 80 minus, and then we have 2 times 8 times 4, which is going to give us 64, and then the cosine of pi over 6 is the same as the cosine of 30 degrees, which we all might know is root 3 over 2, and then the 64 divided by 2 is going to become just a 32. There we have it, and then to solve for L, we would just take the square root of both sides, and that gives us the value of L. Whoops, I just killed L. So there is... Oh, there is L now, and we're going to take this value of L, and we're going to plug that in to the equation that we've been developing. Okay, there we have it right there. And finally, we're going to be able to solve for dl dt. Notice for that distance, that L, we put in millimeters. And now we're going to divide both sides of this equation by this L, by this, well, 2 times L, actually. 2 times this 80 minus 32 root 3. That allows us to cancel it out on the left-hand side, and now it's just a matter of cleaning up the right-hand side. We have dl dt. Let's go over into the numerator here. We have 64. The sine of pi over 6 is the sine of 30 degrees, and that's 1 half. And there we have it. Dimensionally, by the way, we forgot to write in that that 64 would have been millimeters squared. You might remember we had to do 8 squared plus 4 squared, so that came out to the millimeters squared. We also had to do 8 times 4 when doing law of cosine. So basically speaking, we should have the 64 labeled as millimeters squared. And now it's just a matter of simplifying dimensions, simplifying the arithmetic here. We'll do the arithmetic first. So we got to be careful. You're going to do 64 times 1 half times negative 11 sixths and then divide all of that by 2. You might want to do that on a calculator. And when you do that, you get negative 88 thirds. So you'll have negative 88 thirds, which would look like this. In the numerator, you still have pi up there. So make sure you put the pi. And then in the denominator, you have that square root term. And now let's look at the dimensions. We have millimeters squared multiplied by radians per hour over millimeters. So let's write that out. You'll be able to cancel a factor of millimeters, so then you're just left with millimeters times radians, which is still millimeters, and then you put that over hours. So this will be in millimeters per hour. Now that is the correct answer. It's a little bit hideous. You might want to pick up a calculator, process that a little bit further, and you should get about negative 18.6. That's going to be in millimeters per hour. So therefore, the distance between the hands of the clocks is decreasing. So you might even say it's decreasing at a rate of 18.6 millimeters per hour. And then, and then if your homework system wants that broken down in terms of millimeters per second, we can say that one hour multiplied by a conversion factor of one hour is 3,600 seconds. So you're basically dividing 18.6 by 3600 and you get 0 0.005 and that would be in millimeters per second. So that would be an equivalent answer to the question.
Thanks for taking the time to view the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I'd greatly appreciate it, but please do not feel obligated to do so.